Okay, this video is going to cover um, a few types of New Orleans uh, blues riffs that are used in swing and just kind of like the old school blues. Um, and it has, um, you know, a lot of these ideas. Well, we have this, these diatonic thirds or even six intervals. And then using tremolos, and really highlighting the the five and the six and the seven of the chord. Um, and then we're going to also use a, a little bit of drone approach. Um, where we keep the tonic on the top or even the, uh, the seven, where we keep the seven on top and creating some, um, some minor blues licks underneath. Um, so the first lick I want to talk about is kind of entering in with a pickup. So you're coming out of a chorus uh, or a head. So that would be one, two, three, uh, four, and... So it's a very, very common pickup. And then I'm just going to play kind of the shell in the background so you can see where we're at and the changes, the B flat. Well, one, two, three. So what I'm highlighting there is just basically going down the diatonic um, uh, scale of the mixolydian, B flat mixolydian which is the mode that highlights the B-flat-7 chord. And then using the tremolos. And even you can kind of do a grace note with the A-flat into the B-flat, or you could even do approach a half step in to your target. All right, so we're thinking about uh, a long phrase here. And so um, you can even mess around with even doing the D flat. Because that still fits. It gives a little bit of edginess to it. The sharp nine. All right, now we're going to do the same thing over the four chord. But we're going to make sure that we play the D flat and not the D. Because we're approaching the E flat seven. We're the seven, one of the two guide tones, is a D flat. So you want to make sure you play the D flats on all of those and none of the Ds, unless it's chromatic approach. So we're doing kind of the same riff, and then it's going to go back to the one chord. Okay, so we're going to go back to review. Two, three, four, and then you can really just kind of time this out however you want to um, and what I would do is like I would listen to the Herbie Hancock solo on uh, Watermelon Man uh, from Taking Off and he's got it uh, really that's the first time I heard that kind of lick to be honest with you even though it goes back um, several generations before that um, Maybe one generation. Okay, so let's fill some space in the middle now. All right, so we have this. This here. So that's like kind of our phrase, and maybe we can do a little response to that. And just like, you know, really just highlighting this um, kind of blues note area. You don't have to end on the tonic, but you can end on the three, or you can even go down to the seven. But we want to make this like a little short response to the phrase. Now it's probably a little bit longer, but I, I brought that down. It just depends on like, are you playing your voicings up here? Um, or are you playing shells down here? Or are you just doing guy tone? So you just need to make sure you mix and match um, and uh, your, your hands so you're not getting crossed up there. 
and then we go to the to the four chord. And what would probably be nice here is if you could uh, kind of do a response to what you did earlier. So if the first one was, you came up, and maybe the second one we would be, kind of take, reshape the direction a little bit. Um, so you're recalling those ideas um, with intent, okay? All right, so those are two really key blues riffs, and I want to do one more. Um, when you get to the five chord, like the third line of the blues, we want to do something different. Um, what I like to do is I like to kind of um, approach the six. So here's my F7, one, seven. I'm just going to stretch out to the three here. And then if we approach like this... Um, F and build a six on it and it come from a half step above it gives a really nice kind of chromatic feature to it and you're not like closed into this fifth interval here right use six intervals when you can and then and we're just going to come down the blues the, the pentatonic scale and if you can wait dun, 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 then that makes that passing phrase coming down a little quicker, has that more kind of 16th note quality to that, or just, you know, fast triplets. Oops. You could even, like, add a little um, cluster there if you want to. But we're just talking about kind of simplifying this idea. All right, and then when we go to the four chord here, I'll just bring it back up to my shell here. Um, what I what I like to do is to kind of really highlight this chord. So um, this is an E flat seven chord. This is the four chord. You're already ready for these three black keys, and if we add the G to the mix, we can really hear the quality of that chord. So we're matching the E flat seven chord. And almost like a drone kind of thing you could do. And, you know, you got your blues note right there if you want to. And then we follow it up. We go back to the tonic for the last measure or last two bars. And just kind of, you know, respond. Uh, with the the lick that we learned, the second lick we learned. So, I'm um, kind of putting this all together. And then we go to the F. flat 